God is not the tempter. He doesn't tempt anyone with evil. And he can't be tempted with evil. But there is a tempter. And his name is called the devil. And let me give you some scriptures here. Matthew 4.1, Jesus was led up to the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It didn't say tempted of God. He wasn't led into the wilderness, into this hard place, into this lonely place uh, to be tempted by God. He was tempted by the devil. Matthew 4.3, when the tempter came to him, who's the tempter? The devil came to Jesus. He said, if you're the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Did you, if you go back and read that, the only answers that Jesus gave the devil was the scripture, the word of God. He didn't talk to him about his feelings or about his disappointments or about his struggles. He said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It Amen. is written. Praise God. He answered the temptation with the scripture, not with his feelings, not with his Amen. emotions, not with anger, not with frustration. Oh, leave me alone. God, make him go away. You know, Paul did that. He, he, he was being tempted by the devil. And he went to God and he begged him to take it away. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's kind of a, that's kind of a, that's tough love, isn't it? I've already, I've already given you my spirit. I've already made you a son. I've already given you my name. I've already given you power in the Holy Ghost. I've already given you a, an assignment, an anointing, an authority. What are you going to do about it? I've already given you grace. What are you going to do about it? And, and this is really what we need to come to grips with. Are you going through some sort of a difficulty? Are you going through some sort of a trial? What are you going to do about it? It's going to continue until you do something about it. You have the authority to do something about it. You have the word and faith that enables you to do something about it. So what are you going to do about it? How is complaining going to change anything? Amen. How is resigning to the circumstances going to change anything? Oh, well, you know, if God's, if God's trying to make you a better person by sending a trial to you, why would you want to resist the trial? That would be resisting God. So just suck up. And you just go through all the suffering you can, if that's the will of God. I don't get it with people. They're saying, God put this on me, but I don't want it on me, but I need it on me because God wants me to be a better person. So he's sending this trial. Honey, if he's sending the trial, don't resist him. <laughs> Are you following my logic here? Is it just too simple? It's good, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Mark 1.13. Jesus was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted of Satan. Luke 4, 13, when the devil had ended all of his temptation, he departed for a season. He wasn't done. He keeps coming back. And that surprises people. They think, well, you know, I got this victory. I'm never going to have any more challenges. I just won this battle. Honey, that was just one skirmish. There will be another and another and another. But look at this. We're more than conquerors. I read the back of the book. We win. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is defeated. He's going to Hades that God prepared for him and his fallen angels. And you and I are going to be rejoicing in heaven. And we're not going to be weeping over what would have, could have, should have been. We're going to be in the presence of God where there's fullness of joy. Think about the glory Hallelujah. that's coming. Seachurch.life